Welcome to our campfire. Find a comfortable log and sit down. Hello, I'm Jeff Modisett. On behalf of the Rocky Mountain Philatelic Library, I would like to welcome you to our video on one of the world's great youth movements, scouting. Currently, there are about 38 million scouts and guides worldwide. 161 national organizations belong to the World Association of the Scouting Movement. 145 nations belong to the World Association of Girl Guides and Girl Scouts. In this segment, we will focus on the history of the scouting movement and its symbols that can be found on stamps. Stamps are identified by their country of origin and their Scott or Meikle catalog numbers. Let's get started. Many people have fond memories of scouting from their youth or have been involved in scouting as adults. Scouting in its many forms have been shown on thousands of stamps and covers and represent a rich collecting field for adults as well as youngsters. Scouting was the brainchild of Robert Stevenson Smythe baden Powell, known to the British public as BP. As a British military officer, BP recognized that many young British soldiers were, in his words, without individuality or strength of character, utterly without resourcefulness, initiative, or the guts for adventure. From his experience in training these young men, he wrote a small book entitled Aids to Scouting for NCOs and Men as a guide for young soldiers in reconnaissance and field survival. During the Boer War, Colonel baden Pohl was the commander of a small force during the siege of Mafeking in the Cape of Good Hope, Africa. His regiment withstood a siege by the Boer forces for 271 days in 1899 and 1900. In a period when the British needed a military success, he provided one and innovatively used the Mafeking cadets during the siege. These local boys were too young to be soldiers, but served in non-military capacities like delivering messages. During the siege, stamp shortages led to the printing of two stamp varieties with BP's portrait. Upon his return to England, he received a hero's welcome from the British people for his defense of Mafeking. Then he discovered that AIDS to scouting was being read and followed by many British boys. Reflecting on the usefulness of the cadet corps at Mafeking, he realized the importance of training youth and the skills that became scouting. He rewrote his booklet, which was published in 1906, under the title of Scouting for Boys, this time using scouting in a non-military sense. The date given for the founding of scouting is 1907, the year in which BP held an experimental camp on Brown Sea Island in Poole Harbor on the English Channel. At a scout assembly held in the Crystal Palace in London in 1909, BP was astonished to see a group of girls in scout-like dress. What are you doing here, he asked. We girls want to be scouts too, was the reply. Recognizing the soundness of the idea, baden Pohl delegated the development of the girl guides to his sister, Agnes, who started the organization in 1910. Agnes said, Girls must be partners and comrades, rather than dolls. She remained active with the organization until her death in 1940. In 1911, BP met an American woman named Juliet Gordon Lowe. In discussions with Juliet, he suggested the need for establishing girl guiding in America. Juliet agreed with him, except for the name. She returned to Atlanta in 1912, forming the Girl Scouts of the United States of America and, for the rest of her life, worked on developing and promoting the program. Meanwhile, in 1912, BP married Olave Soames, who shared his intense interest in scouting. 
she became active in girl guiding and in 1925 became the world chief guide for girl guiding, a position which took her on over 700 national and international visits to girl guide and girl scout programs. A stained glass window, known as the Boy Scout window, at the Trinity Church in Torrington, Connecticut, illustrates symbols and phrases that have come to be associated with worldwide scouting. The international symbol of scouting is the fleur-de-lis, which represents the three parts of scouting, duty to God, country, and self. The fleur-de-lis is represented differently depending on the national organization. One must be a little careful, however, since not all fleur-de-lis relate to scouting. The symbol of girl guiding and girl scouting is the trefoil. The three leaves represent the same ideals as a fleur-de-lis. For combined boy and girl scouting organizations, the fleur-de-lis and the trefoil are often merged, illustrating another form of scouting on stamps. Other symbols help identify scouts. These include the uniform, the neckerchief, the scout sign, the scout salute, and the left hand shake. There are many different uniforms depending on the country, gender, and age group. From its earliest days, the neckerchief was incorporated into the scout uniform. Its uses are only limited by the imagination of the wearer. The scout sign with the three middle fingers upright represents the three parts of the scout oath, duty to God, duty to country and others, and duty to oneself. The salute is done holding the hand and fingers in the same way. The scout handshake is distinctively different than any other hand salutation. The left hand salutation originates from BP's experience in Africa, where an Ashanti chieftain told him, in our land, only the bravest of the brave shake hands with the left hand, because to do so, we must drop our shields and our protection. In addition to the symbols, there are ideals represented by the Scout Oath, the Scout Law, the Scout Motto, and the Scout Slogan. The contents of the Scout Oath are fairly uniform from nation to nation. The oath that is typical in Britain and its colonies states, On my honor, I promise that I will do my best to do my duty to God, the Queen, and my country, to help other people, and to keep the Scout Law. The Scout Law in many British and former British colonies is similar to that used in other national scouting organizations and in the United States. It consists of 10 points. A scout is to be trusted. A scout is loyal. A scout's duty is to be useful and to help others. A scout is a friend to all and a brother to every scout. A scout is courteous. A scout is kind to all animals. A scout is obedient to all in authority. A scout is cheerful, especially in the face of difficulty. A scout is thrifty. A scout is clean in thought, word, and deed. Be prepared is the universal scout motto. The motto implies that the scout should be ready for all contingencies and events. It takes some variant forms depending on the language. For example, the Chinese characters for the scout motto are those for wisdom, kindness, and bravery. Do a good turn daily is a scout slogan. St. George is the patron saint of scouting and the embodiment of the slogan, Do a good turn daily, for saving the life of a princess by slaying a dragon. April 23rd, St. George's Day, 
is celebrated by a number of scouting organizations. I would like to thank Frank Leitz for his development of this video. There is much more to scouting and scouting on stamps, and we invite you to join us for part two, which deals with the many activities available to scouts. Thank you for taking the time to view this video. At the Rocky Mountain Philatelic Library are two unique special collections that you are welcome to consult, Worldwide Scouting on Stamps and Exile Scouting Units on Stamps.